Former Spartan fan favorite Tyler Hunt joins the program. We talk about what goes into fall camp. What was the transition from Mark D'Antonio to Mel Tucker like? And just his storied career because, man, he had a fun one. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to today's show of Locked on Spartans. Make every moment more right now when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you get a bonus bet every time they win in the regular season. Just head to FanDuel.com slash Locked on. All right, hey, we're going to get to Tyler Hunt right now, but first, hey, just had to show you the new studio. That's right. If you're listening on podcasts, this might not make a difference, although I think the sound quality will be a little better now, but if you're on YouTube... That's right. I'm getting evicted from my office here pretty soon. We got another child on the way. So uh, my office had to go bye-bye, but hey, this studio here. So uh, you'll be seeing this a lot more. Just wanted to drop that in there if things look a little odd to you, but hey, you know what? Enough about all that. Let's get to Tyler Hunt right now. Part-time punter, part-time tight end, and now part-time podcast guest. That's right. That's Tyler Hunt, former Michigan State player. He joins the show. Tyler, my man, thank you so much for joining. How on earth have you been this summer? I'm good. You know, um, kind of ventured out of the realm of playing football and now I'm starting a career as well as, uh, you know, coaching uh, varsity football back in my hometown and uh, taking over the Rocket football program there as well. So. Now, do you just take every position under your wing? Because I can't imagine you just focus on one position since you've played pretty much every position except safety, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I played that in high school a little bit. Um, okay, there we go. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, where on the coaching side of things, wherever they need me, I'm there to lend a hand. Um, got a lot of football knowledge from my time at Michigan State, obviously. But, uh, I mean, on the field as well, I was – Constantly moved into different positions, played anything from DN growing up to linebacker, safety, quarterback, running back, you know, <laughs> small town school stuff right there. Just get yeah. And so, oh, over in East Lansing, though, hey, just less than a week ago, they started fall camp. And Tyler, you went through five fall camps, man, in East Lansing. What about fall camps are you missing the most right now? Or are you just happy to finally have a year off right now? I guess could also be an answer. No, I definitely miss the uh, – more than anything, I miss just being around everybody all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, it's long days. You're there from like 6 in the morning to 7 at night. But, I mean, it, it is overwhelming. But, um, you know, just being with everybody, joking around, it's long, hard hours, but they're also like – fun enjoyable at the same time so I, I can't think of a single day in college where i woke up anywhere close to 6 a.m i can think of many nights where i was going to bed at 6 a.m but man you guys are cut from a different cloth over there in the football building so thanks thanks for sticking to that you know rigorous schedule so fans like us can you know enjoy your labor so uh really really appreciate all the work you guys put in, in the fall man <laughs> yeah, no problem yeah we get after it and so what is the first week of fall camp like? I mean, are you already like installing the offense? Is it defense or like what are the fundamentals that you guys hammer in that first week of fall camp every year? Yes. Yeah, so uh, from day one, we start installing everything. Um, right. Just your simple plays that just about everybody runs inside zone, outside zone, basic um, route concepts and things like that. Um, but a lot of it's also like technique oriented. Um, you, know, you have a lot of young guys that are just playing college football for the, for the first time. So a lot of it's technique oriented, more indie periods, less team periods, um, especially before you put on the pads. So they're going through more of the knowledge, information, technique, fundamental sides of the game right now. Gotcha. And so, you know, we got Central Michigan coming up in a little over three weeks right now. When did you guys like start to turn the page from like, you know, okay, we're going to install everything here, the fundamentals to, all right, this is the week one opponent here. When does that happen in the fall camp schedule? Uh, you know, it's kind of different every year, depending on who you play. Okay. Um, you know, because I remember last year we were already doing some 
uh, or no, excuse me, two years before um, when we had our Peach Bowl run, we were already kind of prepping for Miami. Um, okay. You know, so going inside and turning the heaters on and playing in the heat a little bit. Um, but really, like, the last week of fall camp is when they start prepping for who they're going to play week one. So they have, like, gotcha. two weeks two weeks of prep, prep time before before the first game. Now, that's fascinating because, yeah, I was going to ask that. Like, do you guys ever, like, creep ahead into week two or week three or anything like that? Like, last year, were, were you guys planning for Washington in the fall or was it pretty much all, like, all right, Western's on the clock, only Western here? Yeah, I, I feel like last year we didn't do much of prep during the uh, fall camp. We kind of just you – know, we had some guys coming back. We kind of just – took it for what it was. Um, we were going to do our thing last year and it's more of like, let them stop us. You know, we're going to do our thing and see if we can stop them. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's different every year. So I, I even I'm yeah. curious to see what they're doing right now um, going into fall camp. And one thing I was curious about, because there's just been a few quotes from Mel Tucker, nothing explosive. I mean, he is very buttoned up in front of the media, of course. I'm sure you guys get a different version of Mel Tucker yeah. in practice. But one thing that was interesting, he he talked about how in shape everyone was for that first practice. And I figured, like, well, sure. I mean, that's, that's what you hope that every team is. Yeah. But w- when does the bulk of conditioning start for you guys? Is, is it pretty much the summers for conditioning and now right now is for the fundamentals and installing the offense? Or – Where does conditioning fit in the whole fall camp regimen here? Yeah, so basically your foundation for conditioning is through the summer workout program. Um, You know, they – it's brutal. Um, Coach Novak and the staff, they they get after us. Um, But uh, also just like going through practices, especially during fall camp, they kind of take some back um, during the season. But uh, the way we practice is just – fast pace you know there's no real okay. break um so that's kind of how we condition we condition by practicing um with the amount of reps we get how high paced it is everything's full speed the way we finish and you know just chasing the football and that sort of thing is how we uh condition ourselves and one other thing like, i thought really interesting so far for fall camp not just with college though but for nfl because like their media availability, like they almost get to watch a whole practice, it seems like. So you hear the stories out of NFL camps like, oh, so-and-so threw a punch at so-and-so. Tensions are really high. Whereas, you know, for college, I, I think media only gets like 30 minutes of availability every week. So we don't get to see all that. Like, mm-hmm. is it uncommon for tensions to run high and like, you know, maybe a little bit of shoving match here? Or because, I mean, these, again, like you said, 13-hour days and these are very competitive – or heck, you go inside to practice from Miami. It's ninety degrees inside the building. I mean, what was was that common like in in college practice as well for that to happen? Yeah, I mean, just about every day you'd have not like full on fights or sure, right, right, anything like that. But yeah, you know, tensions run hot, especially when you're out there all day. Um, you know, so yeah, it it we they get fired up pretty, pretty easily and pretty often. Um, I remember last year during walkthrough later in the night, you know, we ended up getting into some, you know, some shoving wars and some big, (laughs) so as much as it's not covered by the media, it's there. Yep. Yeah, because like I think it was Travis Kelsey and it's like, oh, he threw, he threw a punch at a teammate and some people blew it out of proportion. I'm like, I don't know. Long days, these are competitive guys. Like, I, I, I can see this happening, like, a lot more than any of us ever think. So, just yeah. just thought that was interesting here. So, all right, gang, we're going to be right back with Tyler Hunt here in a hot second. Just need to talk your ear off about bird dog shorts. Just got two new pairs of bird dogs not too long ago. Some shorts with the liner. Some lawn pants for the fall with the liner as well. And, guys, when I say liner, you know, it's because these aren't just your ordinary shorts. Not just the cotton that you put on. Mm -mm, No. This liner is like wearing a compression short with just the right amount of snugness. So, not only can you feel good, not only is it going to wick away all that sweat so you're not just walking around damp and smelly all day. No. It's also going to make you look great as well as good as you feel in these shorts you're going to feel just as good if not better i love every pair of bird dogs that i have and hey 
When you go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter promo code locked on college, you're going to get this free white tech hat with your order. As if the shorts weren't good enough, go ahead and get this white hat as well. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college or promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat. You will not want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Also, Hey, over the weekend, massive, massive, massive waves on the internet with homefieldapparel.com. That's right. I'm rocking one of my favorite home field apparel shirts. Got pretty much every day of the week, I'm rocking home field apparel. And so when you go to homefieldapparel.com, you're going to enjoy the great logos of Michigan State because these are all vintage apparel items. And as sweet as the old school logos are, guys. I mean, just like the bird dogs we talked about, these are going to feel amazing on your torso. It is like you are getting hugged by an angel whenever you are wearing home field apparel clothing. And hey, let's say that you're not really the biggest state fan in the world. Let's say you went to Hope College or you went to Hawaii or you went to Colorado School of the Mines. Well, they got all those schools and more. They got tons, tons of inventory to choose from. So go to homefieldapparel.com but also use promo code LOS23 for 15% off your first order. Again, homefieldapparel.com, promo code LOS23 for 15% off your first order at homefieldapparel.com. You know, not, not what do you miss most from fall camp? What aren't you missing in fall camp? Like as you're sitting back at Goebbels High School right now, enjoying mm -hmm. not a fall camp, what are you not missing right now, man? Probably the meetings. Um, okay. <laughs> those early morning meetings, they are tough sometimes, especially if, you know, you didn't sleep the best or, you know, for whatever reason you didn't sleep and you're tired in the morning. Those, those things are pretty brutal to get through sometimes, uh, especially when we're going through installs and you've been there a couple of years and you know the installs, you know, basically what sure. all the folks are going to say. It, it gets pretty pretty tough to stay awake and keep those eyes open. Who on the staff was way too chipper in the morning? Who who was like the last guy you wanted to walk into in the morning just because he was way too over the top to, to start their day? Uh, <laughs> think, there's, a, there's a couple of them out there. Uh, Coach Johnson's <laughs> always fired up. Coach Gilmore's okay. always fired up. Um, honestly, it might be Coach Reed, the running back coach. Oh, wow. Okay, sure. Yeah, he's – He's ready to, you know, already start joking with you and, you know, getting after you a little bit. So try to avoid him as much as possible in the morning. Uh, I don't, I, dude, I don't blame you, man. It, it takes until 11 a.m. for me to even be in the joking mood over here. Uh, so 6 a.m., that, that's a little up and at him. But yep. with, with this year's upcoming team, how often are you still in communication with like guys on this team? And if you guys ever do communicate, like, are they, you know, leaking anything about like how they're feeling about the season or like do you have a general vibe over there in East Lansing right now? Yeah, I talk to them uh, every so often. Uh, my roommates from last year are still up there uh, in the tight end okay. room, um, as well as just some other guys here and there. But uh, the vibes are high. They got a lot of good players returning and, you know, transfers and freshmen that that they think will, you know, show up and, and be ready for the season this year. But uh, no bad things to say. Um, I know Coach Tuck uh, touched on it the other day in one of his uh, media conferences about having the talent, but talent's mm -hmm. not enough. And I agree. They do have the talent this year. Um, you know, it just depends on if they show it on the field. But talent's there. Recruiting, there. Developing players is there. So I'm excited to see what they do this year. And let's just start with the last position room that you were in, uh, the tight end room. And, hey, Malik Carr, very familiar face. Oh, yeah. How close is he to his ceiling? Like, are you expecting, like, a big jump for him this year? Or just how how do you just look at Malik uh, Carr's incoming year for MSU? Yeah, he – Malik might be the most talented player physically, even mentally, that, you know, I've ever met and been a part of. Um, gotcha. I'm excited to see how he grows as a leader and bringing other people in the room along with him. Cause I mean, tight end, there isn't really just one tight end that plays. It's kind of a rotation mm -hmm. of two, three, four tight ends. Um, so I think a lot of the Malik's going to go out there and play. He 
went out there and played last year, and then he went up and played the year before. And, you know, anytime the ball's in his hand, he's, he's made plays. So I'm excited to see how he brings the other guys along. But should be a pretty big year from Leak. Is, is tight end just the hardest position on the football field? Like, I, I know I might be teeing one up for you right now, but you also played, I mean, it seems like all 22 positions on the field at some point going back to high school. So is, is tight end the hardest one, you think? I think it goes quarterback and okay. then tight end, maybe linebacker, inter, interchangeable. Um, but a lot, what a lot of people don't realize is at tight end you have to – know probably the most besides quarterback you got to know the route concepts uh formations and how the routes change depending on the formation uh motions how the formations and routes change depending on the motion you also have to know the blocking scheme um with every single different run we have and then also the fundamentals techniques and everything that go along with route running and and blocking so they expect you to block like a lineman and then run routes like a 180 pound wide receiver so that easy i mean yeah. it's it's it's, it's, it's a lot of your yeah. Plate. yeah. <laughs> so one thing i've always wondered uh because you look i mean the tight end position some guys are better at catching the ball some guys are better at mm-hmm. blocking so like let's say we're talking about a tight end and it's like oh yeah they're more of like a blocking tight end if you hear someone say that about you are you taking that as like a slight like hey hold on I can catch a ball here, or is it like, yeah, no, they're, they're kind of right. I am more of a blocker than a pass catcher or something like that. Uh, I mean, I use I used to take it as, you know, almost like a compliment because I think, you know, you're a Division One player. Most tight ends are going to be able to move, yeah. run, and catch the ball, but it's not often that you run into a tight end that's willing to put his nose in there and block somebody. Um, but, you know, some guys with – more wide receiver background, switching to tight end, they might they might take a little offense to that. <laughs> I don't blame them. I mean, hey. yeah. uh, so just going back to 2021, because I'm going to tie it into this fall camp coming up. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's a little quarterback battle back in 2021. It's Anthony Russo. It's Peyton Thorne. And would you look at that? Just two years later, it's down to Noah Kim, Kaden Hauser, or hey, maybe Sam Levitt, the true freshman over from the Pacific Northwest. But during the fall camp of 2021. When did you start to realize that, okay, this is going to be Thorne's job? Or was it truly you guys were just like the rest of us fans? We found out like 24, 48 hours ahead of the first game. I mean, for a lot of that fall camp, we were we we're in the uh, – we were blind. We, we had no okay. idea. They both had a pretty good fall camp. Um, it wasn't really until – you know, co- the coaches would come up to you and ask, you know, who do you like better? Because obviously, you know, it's a very transparent program and they take a lot mm-hmm. of the feedback from players. Um, and they would ask us, like, who do, who do, we, who do you like better? Who do you think is performing better? Who runs this better? Who runs that better? And, um, you know, Peyton Thorne ended up getting the go-ahead, but it could have easily been Russo as well. So, sure. Um, you know, I think it even was still – quite a bit of a toss up going in that first game. And then, you know, Peyton performed well throughout the entire season that year and, you know, obviously kept his job, but things could have been yeah. different depending on what we would have said, how he played in the first couple of games. And you could easily saw, saw Russo in there as well. And just to stick with that season too, because obviously a special year. I mean, when did you guys realize that, okay, this is going to be a really, really good year? Was was it as early as a Northwestern game or did it take until like maybe a Miami game, for example, to really like show you guys like, holy smoke, like we're, we're going to be sick this year? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Northwestern, you, you never know on season openers. Um, yeah. It's hard to kind of gauge where you're at, um, especially because you don't know how the other team's performing either. Um, so it was definitely the Miami game, I would say. There's a lot of hype leading up to that game and to step onto the field and perform and, you know, basically dominate in the way that we did kind of set the tone for the rest of the season. I could talk about that Miami game for another, like, half hour. I'll only keep it to, like, one more question. Uh, <laughs> how hot was it? I know this is a stupid question. It's- how unbearably – because, hey, Miami sideline, shade. It's amazing over there. Like, they're living the high life on their end, whereas you guys on – the MSU sideline might as well have been on the surface of the sun. Like how, how miserable was it in the second half there? I mean, 
I had to switch shoes at halftime because um, every step was, you could see the water just like it was like stepping in. Oh a my god! Um, it was hot. You know, luckily, they prepared us for it because we used to have you know a couple periods a day leading up to that game. Um, we'd go in the indoor. They turn on the heaters, mm-hmm. and we practice just like in the heat because you really can't. Um, simulate it out there in the Michigan weather, just how hot yeah. it's going to be. So, yeah, they would lock us in the indoor, and we would practice for a couple periods. And I think that definitely prepared us for that game. I think if they didn't do that, then we don't perform near as well. We might still win, but it wouldn't have been, you know, the showing that we had. Yeah. Um, but it, it was hot out there. And there's more to come with Tyler Hunt. But first, hey, need to talk your ear off about FanDuel Sportsbook. Football season is about to finally kick off. And FanDuel is giving you a chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you get a bonus bet every time they win in the regular season. How easy is that? Just pick any team. Like, could it be the Lions this year? I don't know. They are one of the top eight teams as far as Super Bowl odds go on FanDuel. But, hey. Every time they win in the regular season, you are going to get a bonus bet for every victory. And, guys, you already know this with FanDuel. They already have so many more bets other than their awesome props. They got the futures bets. They have spreads, player props, over, under. And when the game kicks off, combine them all into the same game parlays to boost your winnings. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook for this upcoming football season. That is FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, guys. It, just to rewind the clock back a little further, just the off season where Mark D'Antonio, he left. All right, in comes Mel Tucker. I, I literally can't imagine what that had to have been like as a player. I mean, our heads were spinning just as fans in the bleachers. Like, in the program, what was that like when D'Antonio stepped away? I mean, were you guys just blowing up each other's phones? Or was there kind of like a feeling that, okay, yeah, this this makes sense? We were shocked, honestly. Okay. Um, we didn't get much of a heads up that he was leaving. Um, he just came in team meeting. We were called in a team meeting one day and, you know, nobody had knew why. Um, and then he kind of gave the news to us. But uh, one thing that I always respect him for is he's very transparent and he lives by what he says. Um, and he said he would find us a coach that is worth uh, Michigan state and worth the, the title of head coach at Michigan state football. And, uh, you know, he did just – I love Coach D'Antonio, love Coach Tucker to death, but, yeah. you know, he always lives by what he says. And, you know, obviously bringing Coach Tucker here has been huge for this program. And Coach Tucker, he comes in, he speaks to the whole team, you know, closed doors meeting. What, what's your – what's the biggest thing that stood out in that meeting uh, with, with the, the, the whole team? I mean, obviously we were excited for him to come. Um uh, the biggest thing was just how you know, he's going to tell you how he sees it. Um, the way he saw it coming in is we didn't have a lot of talent. We didn't have, um, you know, we needed to develop more, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he lives by being transparent with his players as well. And he's going to you know call you out and he demands more from his players and, he also expects other players to call each other out. And that was kind of what the first meeting was, was that he expects us to play, perform, and present ourselves at, at the highest standard. What was the biggest difference overall from, like, you know, the, the two seasons after with Coach Tucker? What was the biggest difference just in the day-to-day during the season operation between Tucker and Antonio, in your opinion? I think it's more serious under Tucker. Um, okay. You know, he doesn't – you know, we're going through walkthrough under Coach Antonio. There might have been a little joking here and there, um, you know, laughing, giggling on the sidelines, that sort of thing. But Coach Tucker, man, if <laughs> if he even sees you smiling, he's going to rip you a new one. So <laughs> that's that's probably the biggest thing. Oh, man. I last about 12 seconds on the team then. That's, that's good to know. <laughs> um, well, that's that's actually a surprise because, like, look, I mean, you get the camera shots of D'Antonio on the sidelines during games, and 
That's not a guy that I'm looking at. I'm like, hey, he looks like he wants to have a good time right now. <laughs> that's, that's pretty surprising that he's got a... So who... Okay, who is more different away from the camera and the microphones? Was D'Antonio more different than what he perceived to be? Or is it uh, Tucker is more different than what he uh, like seems to be in front of the media? I think it was D'Antonio. Um, okay. You know, he just had this, like look in his eye when he, whenever he's in front of the media. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Just like, <laughs> like mean mugging people all the time. You know, he just had that look in his eye, very serious. Um, but then away from the camera, he's like, he's probably the nicest guy you would ever, you know, meet in your entire life. And yeah, it's just completely different. Obviously coach Tucker's a little different uh, away from the media as well, but yeah. A little more vocal, um, a better variety of vocabulary um, away from the media. But, um, you know, they're both still great guys, great coaches. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited for this season and Coach Tucker and seeing what he can do with the team that is his own now. Right on. And I, I want to just turn the clock back even further. You know, we're hitting all the, on all the good stuff, you know, the, the mm -hmm. 10 win Peach Bowl season, the, the transition from Antonio to Tucker. I'll, I'll just leave last season because, like, we, we already know what happened. A lot of injuries, a lot of pain, a lot of sadness. But, hey, let's talk about your transition from high school to college and eventually just as a tight end because, I mean, look, we've referenced it a few times. You, you play just about every position over at Goebbels. Uh, you started as a punter at Michigan State. Obviously, you finished as a tight end. What? <laughs> like, what? Like, did that even surprised you looking back? Like, do you really look back at it and be like, well, that was quite the journey? Or is that not even that surprising to you? It, I don't think it's a surprise. I, I guess maybe okay. it's because I did it, but I don't, I don't think it was as surprising. And people around me that knew me growing up don't think it's that surprising. Um, but then when I talk to people that, you know, just knew me or like getting into college or in like media and people like that, they think it's the craziest thing. But um, yeah, <laughs> I remember talking with uh, my brother, uh, Scott, and um, just asking him like, hey, what do you think I should try out for? Asking my brother, Travis, hey, what do you think I should try out for? Because I, I almost went in there and tried it out as a quarterback. Um, gotcha. And then I, you know, I didn't have the explosiveness. I wasn't that fast. I wasn't that strong. I wasn't putting up crazy numbers that they were looking for. Um, and so I just decided to kick. And I said to him, hey, you know, if I make the team and I, and I, as a kicker, then hopefully I can transition one of these years. You know, if I'm not playing or not playing as much as I would like, um, then I'm going to switch positions to something. The the often oftenly seen tight end punter <laughs> transition. That's you are like the epitome of a Big Ten player. Because look, I mean, us fans, we love a good punter in the Big Ten, and then we also love a tight end. So you are the quintessential Big Ten player. Uh, just a, a, an incredible career. I also, you know, you mentioned two of your brothers there. Uh, you come from a small family. Uh, yep. You're just one of twelve kids, right? <laughs> is, is is that what it is? You, you have eleven siblings. Is is, is that? Is yeah, I'm, right? a, I'm one of 13, so we get we got 12. Oh, my God, 13. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, wow. The Baker's there. Dozen. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. And so I was, like, watching an interview uh, of you before this. It was one of the Spartan All Access things, and you said that you grew up in a four-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. So with, my God, 13 of you, and then obviously, you know, mom and dad as well. When you come to Michigan State and you step in a dorm, are you, like – Hey, I got some elbow room in here. Like, this is actually pretty big. Like, what what was that like just going from that house to yeah. your college or at Michigan State? <laughs> I mean, a lot of people want to complain about how much space you right. don't have. Um, but I was completely fine with it. You know, I <laughs> only had to share a bedroom with one person, I had my own bed. You know, a lot of the times growing up, like we would all just sleep in the same bed. Like sure. head, feet, head, feet, and uh yeah, I didn't mind it at all. You know, I thought the I was excited to be in the dorm kind of out by myself because I'd never, you yeah. know, had my own space or anything like that before. So I, I didn't mind it, but uh talking to a lot of people, especially people who lived in like Case Hall or some of the tighter, smaller dorms, 
They yeah. not have the greatest of times in there. See, they just had to grow up with 12 siblings. That's all. Like that's that's yeah. one quick fix around that. It's it's easy. Uh this has been an awesome chat. Really do appreciate all your time, man. I, I cannot let you leave though without talking about one of the most famous plays, I'll call it in Michigan State history, on the road, Bloomington, Indiana, the old tight end pass to the quarterback. Now look, Peyton Thorne, incredible, incredible toe tap catch on the sidelines. I think the throw might have been even better though, because I you put the ball quite literally the only place he could get it. Can you just walk through that play for us? And I'm sure every single fan knows what we're talking about here, but just from your point of view, what went down in that play? Yeah, so we did not get the look that we thought we were going to get. Uh, okay. First of all. Um, and actually, talking right after the game about it, I said that the safety dropped and stayed over there. It was actually the defensive end that dropped. And it seems like every time we went to like run one of these plays or had something, you know, drawn up, it'd be like, oh, it's going to work. Worked all we can practice, you know, wide open. And then yeah. we get a look where the defensive end drops right where I'm supposed to throw Peyton the ball. Um, so I had to buy time a little bit. It was supposed to be a quicker pass. Um, like kind of I just catch it, run a little bit, and then just dump it off to him in the flats. But I had to wait for him to go around the D end. And uh, you know, I forget the name of the linebacker, but – not his number. Number 47 was just right in my face. And I was like, all right, well, I got to throw it. And so I just threw it up where, you know, where I thought he could only be the one, you know, making the play got popped right underneath the chain. So I, I didn't even get to yeah. see it at all until I saw it. On okay. the big screen. And, uh, you know, Peyton goes up, makes a play on the ball, toe taps and, you know, we get a first down and then score that drive to take the lead. So it was, Probably one of the best, definitely the best moment in play of, of my career, I would say. No, that was unbelievable. Because I remember I was, like, setting up for, like, my kid's first birthday party over yeah. here. So I had the game on. And I walked by the TV really quick. I'm like, I, I must be going crazy right now. Because I think I just saw Tyler Hunt throw it to Thorn, who just made a, a Randy Moss catch, but on a perfect mm -hmm. throw. I, I must be losing my mind right now. But, no, that's, that's – that's what happened. That's just that's just another day of Michigan State football huh, right yeah. there. Yeah. Look at you guys go. We also had it drawn up going the other way. To where I could throw oh, perfect. <laughs> and uh, I threw about three of them in the dirt in practice. So we just, I'm just like, all right, I'm just way more comfortable going the other way. Can we, can we yeah. just run it that way? And now they were like, yeah, but you don't want to show off you the left arm talent. And I'm like, oh, I'd rather just complete the pass. Since you're bringing up the left arm talent, that, that same interview on Spartans All Access, Connor Hayward at the very end says that you could throw the ball almost 80 yards with your right hand and then 60 or 70 yards with your left hand. Is that is that true? Because that is remarkable if, if that's even close to true. A little exaggerated, but probably like 55, 60 with the left and then like 70 with the right. But um, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, that goes, that goes back to growing up too. My brother, Travis, he had some shoulder um, complications with his with his right arm had a bunch of surgery surgeries and so uh -huh. he, he learned how to throw with his left hand and so I was like you know I that looks kind of cool if you can do it I can do it so growing up we would always just you know play catch with the baseball catch with the football and see who could you know throw the best with their left hand and you know just different fun little games like that is where I you know learned it from growing up that's unbelievable. That, that, that's a great story. So if you want a dorm to feel bigger, just have 12 siblings. And if you want to be ambidextrous, I just have a brother that has a myriad of shoulder surgeries on him. That's good life lessons here on Lockdown Spartans here. That's what I'm talking about, Tyler. But this this is an awesome chat, man. I, I, I was, I've been looking forward to this all day. So I'm, I'm glad you were able to hop on here and lend your insight on fall camp. Tucker, D'Antoni, all that good stuff. Anything else that, that you want to, you know, say before we let you go and enjoy the rest of your week, man? Uh, just – Tune in this year. I think it's going to be a big year for the Spartans, a little bounce back year. Um, you know, I think a couple stars will emerge from the team this year. You know, we got a quarterback battle. Not sure who's going to be the running back this year. You know, a lot of big things happening for on both sides of the ball, too, because we lost a lot of key players on defense. Yeah. So, you know, just be on the lookout for, for younger players, transfer guys to kind of break out of their shell and have a breakout season this year. 
you know it. You know we'll be tuned in over here. Well, Tyler, thanks a lot, man. Really do appreciate you. And everyone else that tuned in, watched, listened, hey, you know we're going to be back tomorrow. And then the day after that, we do it five days a week over here at Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white. Go enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Love you all. Go green.